So there you are going about your day, running your business, doing your things. And someone says, niche down, you've got a niche down. And you're like, what the hell does that even mean? All right, guys, welcome to this episode of Sarah Uncut. Today, we're going to be talking about what the heck niching down even is. So there's this wonderful idea in marketing that if you don't know who you're talking to, you're talking to no one, which I think you can get, right? I mean, that's kind of like, oh, that makes sense to me. I understand. Like if you want to talk to, you know, lumberjacks in Maine, you probably shouldn't be selling bikinis. Probably not going to work, right? That makes sense. We can get this. Okay, understood. Well, when it comes to niching down in your business, there has sort of been a couple of things going on that I want to support you with. So one is people say niche down to the point that you are so specific you're only helping one kind of person. And that scares people. And boy, do I get it, right? So let's say you have decided you really want to help. Oh, I don't know. Women make money, right? Oh, oh wait, that's me. Okay. So let's say I decide I only want to help people who paint. I only want to help women make more money, but they have to be painters, right? That would be like a tight niching down, right? Really tight. That means anybody coming to me who knits, Nope, not my person. Anyone who comes to me who wants to do websites, not my person, right? And you can see you sort of niche down and you get your people. So that's sort of how we talk about niching, right? And I get why it's scary for people. It's really hard to feel like, oh my gosh, but what about all the other people I could help or all the other people I could talk to? You want me to cut them out? And it gets super scary and I get that. Except there is a lot of value in niching down. I don't believe in niching down to the point that you only work with people who paint, unless you're a paint teacher an art teacher who only deals in painting. Okay, then that makes sense. Right, but there are times for so many people, they've niched down to the point that they're no longer feeling connected to their business. They no longer feel happy. They no longer feel like they're making a difference. That's when we've niched down a little too far. Here's the first of two things I'm seeing in niching down that's causing a problem. Number one is people niche down and then they say, oh my gosh, it's not working. I don't know what that means, except for most people, it means I haven't sold anything yet and they're two weeks into this new niche. I don't mean to laugh. But like, we are so dang impatient that it's like, but Sarah, I tried for 20 minutes, nobody bought it. It's like, does it work that way? Okay, you're gonna have to try it for at least two to three months before you understand if this is correct for you. Once in a while, you'll niche down and it was totally appropriate for you to do so, like you were trying to sell bikinis to Lumberjacks and me, not gonna work, right? So you got clear on who you actually help and what you help them with, which is what we do in the sales mastermind, by the way. I love this part. So you get super clear, you're excited. And sometimes when you do that well, bam, sales do come quickly. I'm not talking magical thinking like you make a million dollars in 20 minutes, but you'll start to see a change because people are like, oh, that's what she can help me with. Okay, so that's one thing that I've seen happen is people give up really, really quickly. And the other thing is a little bit more nuanced. And, and here's the thing is people think niching down is only about the audience. That is not true. And by audience, let me be clear, I mean the people you're selling to, right? So it could be that you niche down on social media so that everybody who follows you is somebody who could potentially purchase from you, right? That's what I mean by your audience. But it could be your followers, it could be uh, just your customers if you have a brick and mortar, right? But this idea that it's only about the people who could potentially purchase from you, that is not accurate. Niching down can also be about what you're producing, what you're selling, Okay, that can be a big thing. This is one of the things we do in the sales mastermind that gets people so excited is they're like, oh, oh, I got it. It's like when I decided to be known for the sales mastermind, that was scary for me, right? Because I'm a dang good one-on-one -on -one coach. I love my sprints. I love the Abundance Academy. And it's like, oh, but I'm really known for the sales mastermind, right? But that was me niching down on the offer. Does that make sense? So it's not just about the audience. But what happens when you start to niche down on what you offer and how you communicate is the person you can help starts to hear themselves in what you're talking about. This is why social media is important for those of us that still use it, right? This is why um, your newsletters are so important, why the copy on your website is so important. If you do videos, the content of your videos is so important because the person you're speaking to needs to be able to hear you. And the most important thing you can do as a business owner when you're niching down is making sure that when you're talking about one offer, you're crystal clear on who you want to bring into that offer, okay? That is the most important thing you can do. And here are the questions, grab your pen because you're gonna wanna write these down. Here are the questions you can ask in order to get crystal clear on your communication as you're niching down so that you can sell to the right people. Okay, number one is where is my person right now? The person that I can help with this offer, with this post, with this video, where are they right now? 
And what are they doing? Isn't that crazy? I know. Yeah, but then this is when we get really fun coffee. Like, hey, put down your ice caramel frappuccino and listen up because they're like, how the hell did she know I was doing that? It's because you're really thinking about your person and where she or he is right now. Okay, if you're like me, I love doing podcasts, right? Well, a lot of times in the podcast, I'll be like, if you're driving and they're like, how do they know that? If you're working out, how does she know that? It's because I take the time to ask the question, where is my person? What is she doing right now? Now, here's the next question you need to ask. So keep that pen handy, right? So now you've asked the question, where is my perfect person right now? And what is my perfect person doing right now? Okay, so you've got that. Now, the next thing you want to ask is, what is the problem I'm going to solve? If you haven't heard my Sarah Uncut, where I talk about the coffee shop chest, we're going to link to that under this video. You've got to go grab that one because that's what you're doing right now is you're passing the coffee shop test. But the question is, before you start to write, before you hit record, before you send out your newsletter, is what is the problem I'm solving? Okay, so you got to get crystal clear on that. Do you see how you're niching down? You're niching down, but you're not so much niching down on I only help this one person. You're talking about the problem you're solving and you're reaching that person where they are right in the moment. It is so effective because they go, oh my gosh, she gets me. Wow, this must be a great bit. She really gets me. And it's the people, it's the business owners who don't do this work that feel like they're talking to no one because they are. They haven't done the work to sit down and say, where's my person right now? What are they doing right now? And how can I help them right now? Does that make sense? The more you do that, the more precise and effective your communication out will be. So it's important that you do this type of niching down per product that you offer, per social media post, right? Per event, right? Anytime you're communicating out that you do this work, if you're about to speak in front of an audience, who are they? What do they need? What problem can you solve for them right there? You wanna get crystal clear on this kind of work. And for me, it's much more important you do it per like event, meaning, post, newsletter, anything, right? Any Anything outward facing this communicating. So I don't want you to feel like you have to niche down to the point that you can't do anything. Like I can only help this one person. I'm so stifled. That's not the point. The point is that the person who could purchase from you sees themselves in your communication and understands that you are the person that can solve their current problem. I hope this was super helpful. If you have any other questions about niching, please post them below. I will answer your questions. I think this is so important and it causes so much confusion and so much heartache for so many business owners. Let's put an end to that. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next episode.